What up, Screen Fiends? I'm GB, and you're tuned in to Screenheads TV, where we like to discuss all the wonderful things appearing on your movie and your TV screens. In this episode, I'm going to give my review of Snowfall, Season 1, Episode 5, titled 7-4. All right, so episode five of Snowfall, 7-4, uh, I liked it much better than I liked the episode prior, episode four. If you didn't watch my review on that, it went up pretty late. You can uh, go and check that, check out you know, what, how I felt about that episode. But now with episode five, I enjoyed it more. I thought the story um, you know, fleshed out much better than the previous episode, but... I felt like there was these big glaring holes. Like I was missing pieces of story that were either edited out for time, edited out for content, which I doubt for FX, or um, took in out, taken out of the script before they actually filmed. Uh, they, you know, they do that from time to time. It's like they'll edit the script as they're filming too. Uh, to meet whatever constraints the network is putting on them. But now FX, judging by their other shows, most of them, there are a few that have similar problems to this. Uh, but for most of their shows, they seem to be risky, they seem to be out there, they seem to take chances where other networks wouldn't take the, you know, the same chances. So I really don't expect it to be uh, them editing it for content. Editing it for time, I guess, is a possibility, which is kind of silly for a, a network like FX because what do they show right after they show their 10 o'clock show? They show it again. So it's not like they're eating into the time of something, you know, uh, an, another program. You know what I mean? Uh, and the advertisers, I'm sure, pay the same money because it's the same shows. It, well, then again, the time slot may affect the money advertisers pay, but that's besides the point. So I don't see it being that, being cut down for for time constraint either, not on FX. So I'm wondering uh, if it's, for some reason, this just got edited in the script like before filming. Because if you watch the episode, it doesn't really explain Teddy and Alejandro, I think his name is, crashing. Uh, I feel like there's scenes missing between Franklin and his friends that are necessary. And uh, stuff with the dad, too, I think, felt a little off to me. And the stuff with Gustavo El Oso and all that, to me, felt choppy. So all three of our major stories felt choppy in this episode, that, that we, were, we were missing pieces of it. And to me, that hurt the episode. But in, it hurt in, in, you know, in an enjoyable episode at the end of it. I liked it. I, I really enjoyed the stuff that happened with the 4th of July party at, with Franklin. Uh, that was really good stuff. Just everything. The stuff with his mom, the stuff with his dad. The, uh, we didn't really get it a lot with the uncle, you know. But the stuff with the uncle in it was good. Just not with Franklin and the uncle interacting. And then the stuff with the friends, like I said, it felt a little uh, a little off. And, um, and I thought they could have done a little bit more with, with the scenes with the dad at the party. Their brief conversation, whatever. Uh, but it was it was the best part of the episode, in my opinion. I really enjoyed that whole scene, the whole cookout and everything. It felt real. It felt authentic. And um, it, you want to pay attention in watching this show because this is how Crack began. Crack is not out there on the street yet, right? So you have to pay attention to the neighborhood. Now, even though if there might be drugs in the neighborhood and gangs in the neighborhood and some violence here and there, whatever... Uh, it's not a, a an overall violent neighborhood. We don't see violence or or drug addicts everywhere. People slinging drugs all over the place. We don't see that. And I think what we're going to actually get, probably throughout season one, is the decay of that neighborhood. We hear some some murmurings of violence going on throughout the neighborhood, um, but it seems like it's out of place. Like they're not used to that level of violence. Maybe. Um, not to say it, that that South Central LA wasn't violent before crack. Crack totally changed it. It changed the game. It changed the the city. It changed the backdrop. It changed the people in big, big ways. 
So I think that's part of, they're not making it blatant, which I kind of like um, that that's what they're going for. But I think that's what we're going to end up seeing really is the decay of this neighborhood and these people and these families. Um, all right. So that was all good stuff. Don't really have much to say about it. There wasn't a lot to read into. Uh, you know, the, the dad and his dynamic is interesting. Uh, he obviously has a lot of contempt and hate for the dad. Rightfully so if, you know, he chose drugs or alcohol or being a bum over his family. I guess, you know, uh, he has the Franklin has the right to be mad at his dad for that. So I get that. But there's also this love, too. For him being your dad, you, you for him being his dad, you he, you see that in when he's talking to his mom about the pictures, and then you also see that in the fact that he goes and bails him out, and then he's standing there looking at his dad, hoping for a wave, a smile, something, and his dad just turns around, and Franklin takes it as like a dismissal, I guess. But in all actuality, his dad was probably just turning around to get his effects and sign the papers, right? Um, cause when he turns back around to look for Franklin, he seems upset or puzzled that Franklin is gone. So, uh, it's an interesting dynamic and I'm really interested to learn more about it. I, I kind of wish they unrolled the dad a little sooner, uh, as, you know, as opposed to waiting for episode five, maybe we got glimp, we did get one brief glimpse, but only of like his back in an earlier episode. But I think there should have been a little bit more discussion or a little, just a little bit more of the dad before episode five to kind of get us um, prepared for this emotional pairing between the two. But I like that that part, so I'm not really complaining. Like I said, the stuff with the friends felt like they had conversations about going to Avi and getting, you know, more product and all that. And and Franklin was probably dismiss we, we don't really dismissive of it, but we don't see any of that. And it felt like, why did why was that cut? I needed that bit, you know? Uh, but whatever, so let's move on. So then we have um, the Teddy and Alejandro stuff. So we don't know really how they crash, why they crash, how Alejandro was hurt, any of it. Uh, and they didn't even crash, they landed. So this part, was out of everything in the episode, this part, even though I liked it from a performance and a writing standpoint on what's going on, I really was upset that we don't see how they got to that point. And, you know, I don't always want to blame myself. What did I miss? Blah, blah, blah. Because I feel like I've been doing that a lot with shows that have these holes. But I don't think I'm missing anything. Because <laughs> I'll go back and rewatch. And it'll all be, you know, it, like, it'll still be the same. Stuff missing. Parts uh, that just didn't feel. That's the same complaint I had with episode four. Was they took stuff out that I needed to be there. And I don't get it. I don't understand why that's happening on a network like FX, it feels like a move that would happen on an ABC, an NBC, a CBS. And I hope FX isn't trying to push into that territory because they've kind of created their own bubble and they need to make that bubble grow because it's working, in my total opinion. All right. So, I mean, I, I, there's not much I can say about it because I didn't understand how they got in that position in the first place. Right, you kind of get a sense of it. Teddy says, "Well, I didn't want to go into this airport, so I made him fly somewhere else, another route or whatever." But it doesn't explain why they're in the position that they're in, at all. So, um, yeah, not much I could say about that one either, right? And then we get the the El Oso stuff with uh, Lucia and and who I thought was her brother. And I need to go back and watch. Do they present it as her brother? I think they do. But she's actually his cousin. So uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm almost 100% positive that in the earlier episodes, they tell us that they're brother and sister. And now we're finding out that they're really cousins. And, uh, you know, this is kind of even alluded to before they say it in the episode when El Oso is walking with uh, the brother, I, I forget his name, sorry. And uh, Enrique? I think that's his name. And uh, he's asking questions. Oh, so this is where she grew up meaning talking about Lucia. And he says, uh, you know, I don't know, you don't really know what you're talking about. You ask too many questions, whatever, right? So Lucia probably didn't grow up there because that's not her father. That's not her brother. Uh, who knows who her parents were or what happened to her parents, whatever. Maybe she did grow up there because she was orphaned. I don't know. But um, that'll be interesting to find out more of as we go. So this one definitely felt like it had the least amount of holes in it. Uh, we, but in the beginning, 
we kind of don't know what's going on with him counting out the bags and then Lucia sending the, the workers away for the day. That's like a hole to me. Like we don't really know what's going on there. But other than that, there's no other holes. So then, uh, you know, Enrique drags him to the party and we get uh, an intro. We get to really meet Enrique's dad. I think his name is Enrique. I don't want to keep calling him that. And that's not his name. Because <laughs> that's probably what's going on right now. Uh, I don't even see him here on the cast list. I don't know. All right. Uh, oh, his name is uh, Alejandro? Yeah, Alejandro. Not Enrique. Sorry. <laughs> so we get Alejandro and his uh, uh, his dad, who we never really met before. Not a, a, in a big scenario anyway. And he's kind of vetting Gustavo trying to find out what kind of employee he is, if he's someone that can be trusted, whatever. Uh, and it seemed like the dad might have been, uh, you know, okay with Gustavo, but the gentleman sitting behind him, who we don't know who he is, probably the right-hand man, uh, doesn't look like he's too um, approving of Gustavo. So we'll see where that goes. I think that's where we're going in the future with this story, is we're going to have um, Gustavo... I'm, yeah, no, we'll have uh, the the father and his henchmen there, you know, kind of um, following Gustavo or uh, keeping tabs on him just to kind of figure out if he's someone to be trusted. But that's all I got with this episode. This was a yeah episode. Look, after the first three episodes, which were amazing, and then a fourth episode where I really didn't like it all, and then a fifth that kind of dipped back up, but nowhere near the first three episodes. I'm a little worried for the series. But I'm not counting it out yet because I enjoyed the first three episodes so much. And I love this time period. And I like the acting and, and, and the writing as far as dialogue and the scenes go. Everything about the show is pretty good. Except for these last two episodes and them feeling like they're taking things away from it. They're taking things out. And they're making it feel more networky than it than cable, and that to me is a big, big, big problem. All right, so um, that's it for this one. Sound off down below. Let me know what you thought about Snowfall season one, episode five, seven, four, and uh, or just what you think about the show in general, or any of the sort. You know what's going on. Uh, you know, in the real world at that time, what was going on then, or anything like that. Sound off down below. Anything Snowfall related. Uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Always appreciate it. You guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.